Oh, rookie wasting no time getting some revenge there for Team Ice, but it's time to move on to our seventh battle of the evening. Spawning on the blue side for Team Fire, two-time world champion contender, the top trickster himself, it's Westor! And his opponents on the red side for Team Ice, representing the Commonwealth of Independent States. He's here to be the door's next kryptonite, it's Lex! <laughs> Gentlemen, let's get in there and have a GG. And here we go, ready to kick this one off. The seventh one we won, we've got going today. And if there's one thing I love watching, it's Westor trying to 1v1 people. Yeah, I just hope that unlike the Batman vs Superman trailer, we haven't spoiled everything in the preview to this matchup because I don't think Lex is gonna do too hot here. So, I mean, at this point, Westor, he's used to his 1v1s. Uh, you know, I just, I. I, I, Lex, his champion pool is not the Lucian Caitlyn. He plays Trist, he plays Vayne. He did play Lucian, though. He, he did, he did, he did. But well, he may not get a chance this time. We've been seeing it banned hot and heavy here. Caitlyn's going to be taken off the board by Westor right away. And there is the Fizz ban. Lex says, no, <laughs> you're not going to do that to me. No, he's like, I, I could just play 80 carries into it, but fine, I'll just get rid of it. Don't want you to pick it. Don't give you your moment in the sun. Yeah. Or in the moon, I guess. That's, that's the look that just, oh, wait. That was banned? That was, okay. Well, you know, he's still got some options on the board. There's the Morgana band away. That's an interesting one. <laughs> Westo's like, Fizz is out. Can I play TF? Is TF good in this game mode? Is Zed is still out. Uh, so I actually would picks. be interested to see him pick TF here. Um, Lulu out as well. There's a Lucian taking off as well. Uh, and as you said, Zed is available. So uh, will so we see? Kindred, but it's don't get picked no, up. No, Lex, don't. Oh. Uh, he did this but, okay, before, didn't okay, he? Okay, so at this point, Westor either goes something like a Twisted Fate, something or... with range. Like, oh, Kindred is available. Yeah, that's what He picks it up. So it's a quick pickup. I like that. Plays yeah, a bit like the Callista, too. Been locked in. Uh, it is more effective than Callista as well, because Kindred actually has all of her abilities available. Yes, um, there. So, that. It's plural. Yes, it's a plural thank you very much. Grass. Lamb and Wolf. And so it is plural. And it is going to be a LeBlanc lock in. First, we're going to see this side of the 1v1. Also plural when the passive buffs. Oh, uh, very true. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that other than that. I'm kind of... It's okay, let's, let's move on somewhere else. Classic misdirection. The Ignite locked in, though, too. We've got a few more seconds before that could possibly be changed. I don't see that happening, though. That is... It's pretty much like Westor's, like, spirit summoner spell. I'm a little surprised at the Morg ban. Yeah, it was a bit hot. It was I a bit mean, hot, wasn't it? She's not the best at 1v1s. I mean, you can just shove Tormented Soil down and just constantly push it. You can, yeah, you can pretty much in. CS for days as long as you don't You can. Um, it's not really a Lex champion. It's, I mean, I know CIS played a little bit of Morg at uh, IWCA, but that was in 5v5s, uh, not in the one versus one. Maybe he was watching the wrong VODs. <laughs> Why are there five people on this one versus one? That's okay. Westor, you know, he still managed to get his hands on an assassin. We know that he just loves these to death. and. Him playing LeBlanc, I think, is a scary, scary thing, even up against Kindred. However, you can't get too close to the Wolf's Frenzy because that is a very, very powerful tool in this 1v1 as we load up once again for the seventh time today. Onto the Howling Abyss. Westdoor on LeBlanc. Team Fire representing, taking on the Kindred of Lex. Ah, I really wanted to see Doran's blade, LeBlanc. I mean, this is something that, you know, we were you talking about. You want AD on everything. <laughs> Just go AD to begin yeah. the game. It's so strong. Oh, going in. There we go. Very quick wolf Look at that look trade. At, it, it's look crazy. at that disgusting trade. Oh, and the manner spam. He's Ugh. a happy camper. Ugh. It's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, it's not like AD would have done too much more for Westor in that situation. He would have had a little bit more damage that Lex just would have gone straight back, so. It's not that big of a difference, but still, Lex is going to have an insane amount of damage in this early game. Yeah. And he's showing why he didn't take the Ignite either. He really just doesn't need it to dish out a whole lot. He can just wait for Westor to go for the all-in and just outfight him in the zone. <laughs> Westor's back. Oh, There's a way of the words, though. Westor's picked up the sweeper. He's like, no, you don't get map control. Uh, you are never having map control at this point. So, uh, good on you, Westor. Changing the method. Vision denial. Yeah, what he's but... All about. Lex is going to go jump for him, though. Of course, uh, he's back away from the minions. You know, the other thing that 
makes Kindred really strong on one versus one. Not only is it just her kit and how good it is, uh, just the outputting damage early and the ultimate that keeps you alive. Uh, keep in mind, with Grasp of the Undying plus uh, the E ability that is going to come from Lex, that third proc, where you get health back, plus you have Grasp of the Undying, you get health back. Everything around Lex's kit is about getting health back and dealing a lot of damage in return. So the masteries play into Lex's favor as well. Monster is definitely going to have his work cut out for him here. He's got some juicy farm that he's trying to pick up, but there is a lead already for the CIS AD carry. He's going to back off, give Westor a little bit of room to start working this one. Level 2's all around, but Lex should be able to counter-engage anytime he wants. A little bit more damage, does trade back, and he steps out of the Wolf's Frenzy. That was actually a good trade for the door. Yeah, that was a good trade. That was a really good trade, and Lex was taking damage from the cannon minion there as well, so even at the end of that little trade, Lex was still taking damage. And that puts Westor a fair amount ahead. Lex is... Uh, his one is going to go in. for it. He might need to now, though. Another good trade for Westor, as he's just able to jump out of the Wolf's Frenzy just outside the zone. Lex could not return fire onto him as effectively, but he will be all right. Not munching the biscuit, but he's getting the health back, as Westor has to do that himself. Yeah, very difficult for Lex, actually, to uh, you know read Westor's aggression attempts using... Uh, Distortion, just get himself in. So Lex has to be careful, but Westor cannot really step oh, inside in. that zone. Ooh, gets the passive. passive. Yeah, Lex definitely took the good trade there, and he has a slight level advantage. Westor needs just a few more ticks on the experience bar to be able to match that one. But for the moment, Lex has the advantage. Yeah, Lex has, uh, well, both of them both have summoners up, but health potion still on for Lex. Everything is about the sustain game. 22 CS up to against 16 right now. There are a few minions extra in that wave for Westor as it pushes in. And Westor does manage to get that first one. These back minions are uh, pretty easy to get. It's just one tower hit, one auto attack. Lex is, Lex is, is controlling this health shrine, though, and he manages yeah. to pick that up right as it respawns. Three and a half minutes into this game here. Westor has evened up the level game, but he's still behind in the CS department. It just goes up. I yep. completely missed that. I thought yeah, it went it's up earlier. 75. So you're looking at 230 and then 345. I was reading the, easy the telegraph, telegraph for the Undying. Funny enough, they look a little similar when it goes back to you. A little bit. Yeah, I got yeah, you. You're right. That's what that's what happened right there. Yeah, you did. So it's now it's okay. jumping in. A little bit more damage. Not too much, though. Not too much, but you can see Westor is trying to just stay up. Keep the CS as close as he can right now. Lex is focused just on getting to that 100 mark. No real way right now for Westor to do too much. When he hits 6, may decide to go all in, or at least throw out like a double distortion onto Lex. Uh, see if he can land the chains. That really is going to be what is the indicator for Westor to see whether he can actually go aggressive, is if one of those chains lands. Looks at Westor back to farming under tower pretty much what he's been having to do since the start of this game, but we definitely could be in for a longer one if Lex sticks to that CS strategy. He has the advantage of about six minions right now. They make that seven. Throws down the domain, or the frenzy, I should say, and Westor takes a lot of it, but he's able to throw the chains down, gets the stun up. Lex does not have the minion aggro, though, and he's not too worried about that. Yeah, I'm not worried right now. Lex actually going to have to back away and pick up his own health relic, so now he's got two very different timers to keep track of doesn't pressure out Westor's. I think Lex actually could have played that very differently and tried to push Westor back for his health relic rather than Lex peeling back to go for the defensive one. But Lex does hit six first. Westor still a little way away from that level six. Don't does manage to hit. Westor has to ult himself away as well. Unfortunate. Lex doesn't have too much mana, but he's hung onto his ultimate, hung onto his summoner spells, and he has got a lot in his pocket with this mini wave sending crashing towards the tower. And at this point, you can see Lex pretty much out of mana. Westor has enough for about two, three spells to come out. So he can kind of force Lex back. Lex should just have enough for his ultimate to keep himself alive. Also has barrier to keep himself alive as well. So as soon as Westor goes in, if Lex feels like the trade is winnable for himself and actually would win him the game, just hits that exhaust, hits that barrier and trades against Westor. The only problem with that is Westor goes instantly back to uh, his initial position and then yeah. you just wasted two summoners. So Lex has to be careful on exactly when he reads Westor's order. Jumps in, gets some arrows, Westor's gonna go for it. That is a massive burst. He's gonna get some back, but a great trade for Westor. And there you can see, Lex knows Westor isn't gonna kill him, so can't afford to use his summoners. He has to hold on to them and just hope that Westor doesn't go for the all-in right after the first one. 
Lex does pick up the health relic, so we'll uh, pick that up, be able to go back. Does still have 10 CS in the lead, so Westor will be slower on the recall and won't be able to make up the CS difference here, but Westor is just gonna have to shove this into tower. It's a cannon wave though, so that isn't gonna happen pretty uh, anytime soon, so Lex will come out ahead from this little uh, minion push trade that's going on here. It does give Westor a little bit of an opportunity to grab some of the minions, reclaim the CS differential as he jumps forward, pushes that one in. Unfortunately, Lex is just about due to arrive, and that He's means he will be able to pick one. up a bit of this. One, maybe two, nope, not even. There goes the cannon over to Lex. Continues his lead, continues growing it. As Westor's had to back away, let's see what he does go ahead and pick up. Not quite enough for the Morello Namicon. Yeah, still a way away from that Morello Namicon right now. You can see he does pick up a couple of health potions to go alongside the parts of the Morellos. Hex Drinker on the side of Lex is going to keep him pretty healthy here. It's a sustained battle. That's what we're in for. It is. I just wonder, can Westo actually burst Lex down with these items? I'm looking at it. It's going to be hard with the Hex Drinker shield, though. Yeah. That's a really difficult thing. And he's going to go ahead and start trading. Not too much traded back. He even avoids some of the minion damage. And Lex will be able to return a little bit of health to himself thanks to the Grasp of the Undying, but Westor just, the threat is ever present. This guy is just so dangerous when you give him an assassin. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just trying to read the damage that Westor has. Uh, the first distortion did about 200. Uh, Lex, that one did a bit now more, he goes all in. There's the Wolf's Frenzy, the chains are on, it's gonna be stunning up, and he takes a good trade against Lex, but Lex is gonna try to get a little bit more back as the Sigil of Malice flies in his face. Oh, Lex is having to just make really tough decisions here because Lex has to basically wait for Westor to use his summoners before he can react. Then Lex uses his in response, and the cooldowns are go. basically the same. Westor no summoners yet. Down. There's the exhaust. Double exhaust is down. Westor, the clone's ahead of him, and he has to back away. Lex wins that one. Oh. Handily, and the ignite's down. Lex comes up so oh, wait, big baby. in that trade Not Lamb's respite instantly staying alive. And gets the health back from it. Barrier is still available for Lex, so keeping his cool, knowing his ultimate was there. Still got barrier too. Yeah, exactly. Has that barrier available? Double Dorans and the Hex Drinker Shield was popped. So uh, it's very difficult to kill Lex right now, but a lot two out of his three defensive abilities are no longer available. Only that barrier remains. And at this point, Lex just stays in lane. I actually am not too sold on him going back for his health relic there. I mean, he didn't have too much to do there. And sure, it takes it away if Westor ever manages to get up there, but I kind of prefer having that available. He will get a little extra mana from it, but he wasn't suffering all that much to begin with. And he hasn't forced Westor off his own once again. I'd like to have seen Lex hold the map position and force Westor not to be able to pick up his own health relic. Despite the mistakes, however, he does maintain this very healthy CS lead, about seven ahead, and that means only 15 minions to go before he can yeah. finish the game off with minion style. And with Westor having to go back here, it gives Lex another chance to send these minions crashing into the turret. Westor is going to try to jump for him, but he's not going to be able to get much there. Just has to double distort his way through to clear the wave. At this point, Westor's best bet was not to push that wave out. Westor needed that wave to push towards his turret so that Westor could somehow try and drag Lex forward. Lex actually recalled there, and that is going to give Westor this wave, so that benefits Westor. I'm a little surprised that it let Westor basically even CS. Now, if any of these die to this turret, Lex could be in trouble. Westor did miss one creep off this wave, though. Yeah, Lex is going to be up here, but... Th what? That's one to the turret. So that kind of evens Picks things up. up. Just barely. Sigil of Malice not going to do too much. Grasp me and dying will heal okay. it back up. So, all said and done, there's still that 5 CS differential. When it comes to this endgame scenario, that's still giving this advantage to Lex. And Westor knows it. Oh, He's got to he go in, it. but he misses the combo. Taking too much damage. The clone is popped. Lex finds the right one. Wants to win it with the kill. But the health relic spawns at exactly the right moment. Nonetheless, Lex is so close to finishing this game. He's got the minions to do it. CS victory at 10 minutes, 50 seconds. Yeah, that was Lex keeping his cool, keeping himself Staying alive. in this game and actually now puts uh, another CIS player into the round of 16. Two out of three so far, not too bad for the international wildcard all-star winners as he takes out the door. 
kicks the door down slowly. But, well, Very, yeah, he that's basically he unscrewing the hinges and like doing it in just the most manual yeah. way possible. Takes off the handle, and takes off the lock. Then slowly walks away with it. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> I mean, that was a bit of an anticlimactic one. But honestly, we're still pushing the wave. Oh, that was painful to watch. Yeah. I'm not so sorry. I mean, mistakes that. were made all around, but they'll have some time to review it, look back to it. But for now, we're going to.